we will have today two excellent speakers with large experience within the menopausal issue in clinic and research, Professor Yun, South Korea, and Professor Yu, China. Responsible for the scientific content, only are the two speakers and Emma's for organization and technical support, the KIT agency group, and financial support for, from the company Abbott. The presentations will be translated in six languages. It is now my great pleasure to introduce as first speaker, Professor um, Bo Yun, Yun um, family name Yun. She is Associate Professor of the Yonsei University College of Medicine in Seoul, South Korea. She is working in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Severance Hospital, Division of Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility. And she is also Associate Professor of the Department of Pediatric and Adolescent Gynecology in the Children's Hospital of the Yonsei University. She is an MD and also a PhD. Professor Yun is engaged in basic research like endometriosis, but also in methods of fertility preservation, especially in adolescents and young adults. With respect to menopause, her research is especially on bone and cardiovascular diseases. Professor Yun has got Best Investigator Awards and Best Paper Awards from the Korean Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology and the Korean Society of Menopause. He has about 50 original papers in high-ranked journals. With respect to menopause, she published, for example, as a member of the Academic Committee of the Korean Society of Menopause, she published about the general guidelines of this menopause society. In our webinar today, Professor Yun will present on the following issue, menopausal symptoms in Asian populations, common complaints and current management. Professor Yun, we now look forward to your presentation. Can you all see my presentation well? Thank you for your kind introduction, Dr. Nguyen. Dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure to have an opportunity to have a talk today, especially thanks to MS and all the colleagues and friends for supporting today's webinar. I'm Bohyun Yun from Yonsei University College of Medicine, Seoul, Korea. Well, I have nothing to disclose. Well, today's talk will include common menopausal symptoms in the Asian population and the current state of its management briefly. As we all know, the main physiology of menopause regarding hormone is the depletion of the oocytes, resulting in anovulation and elevation of gonadotropin. This whole process leads to hyperestrogenism, which causes various menopausal symptoms, including the vasomotor symptoms. Um, around the menopause, the actual remaining oocyte may be around a thousand, and usually most of these are not like it's not able to be used, and the hormone production declines spontaneously. But around 45 to 55, it may fluctuate a lot. And if it progresses to complete menopause, it'll just get decreased fully and it'll just remain almost none, like with plateau. So the menopause can be said of natural reproductive aging, which causes the hyperestrogen. According to the straw staging system, symptoms related to menopause come out at the time of fluctuation of the hormones. So during the menopausal transition to early stage of menopause, flushes develop often, which changes to genital senile symptoms by time goes on. 
the median menopausal age seems to be similar around like 49 to 50 years old. However, um, there's been a lot of studies, but for example, according to an epidemiological study, a um, median age was like around 49 years old among the whole world. And with lower education and occupational levels, probably the menopausal age can be more earlier. And if the woman is a smoker, almost a year is earlier. However, um, whether the obesity and the physical activity affects the menopausal age is inconclusive for currently. Well, you can see here, the United States and the Europe and the Russia, China, Australia, all very similar around 50 years old. And in India, in Middle East, Africa, and Latin America, seems a little bit earlier, but still it's all stuck together around 48 to 50 years old. The onset of the menopausal symptoms, we usually think it's, it begins with the menopausal transition. And there were some, a few studies um, reported the age of the symptom onset, and it was around 45 years old. The, the real world data seems to match, correlate well with the straw progress um, as we thought. There are various menopausal symptoms expressed and hyperestrogenism results in symptoms such as flushes, multiple generalized ache and psychological and cognitive dysfunction as well. There may be about like 50 or more symptoms associated with menopause, but these symptoms can be like classified as follows, like the somatic symptoms, including exhaustion or joint pain, muscle aches, or psychological symptoms, including sleep disturbance or anxiety, uh, mental fatigue or irritabilities, et, um, et cetera. And the fatal moderate symptom includes the sweating and the flushes very commonly. And for lastly, the sexual discomfort, including painful intercourse and the vaginal dryness, it can be the part of the menopausal symptom. From now on, we're gonna take a look into a few studies um, presenting menopausal symptoms in Asian population. As you guys all know, there's a bunch of studies regarding this topic. And I just um, picked up probably some representative studies and studies which may help to help us to focus on each um, country's situation. Um, the first is from China. So it was, um, I've referenced the um, national data of China and it was including about 1600 women aged 40 to 60 years old. And they measured the modified Cooperman index for the menopausal symptom. And the most common one was fatigue and the weakness, and followed by irritability and sleep disturbance. The hot flush was the fifth most common symptom. There was a study from Macau as well, and they included 400 women aged 40 to 60 years old. In this study, they measured menopause um, rating scale. And um, in this study, there was like about 35 percent of participants who've um, replied as they have severe menopausal symptom, more than 17 scores. The severe MRS scoring, that can be representative of impacting the quality of life. So that means the menopausal, because of the menopausal symptoms, this participants may, might experience like decrease, decreasing of the quality of life. In this Macau study, they um, re reported that physical and mental exhaustion was the main most common symptom in this population. In Japan, um, it's been, um, it's a kind of old study, but it was a beautifully presented study. So I've um, referenced this one. And um, in this study, they included 3000 women aged 50 years old and um, they, Authors, they included their unique um, questionnaire, including um, 10 menopausal symptoms. 
And um, in this study, Japanese women, they most of them, um, they reported they have like stiff shoulders. That was the most prevalent symptom. And next was the fatigue. And they had sweats, but it was only 45%. In our country, South Korea, we have a um, quite um, recent paper, um, which was conducted using our national health insurance data. So it was a huge data. And um, the paper, they included 3000 women aged 45 to 65 years old. And in this study, they measured the menopause um, rate, rating scale as well. And um, in this paper, the participants, the most prevalent um, symptom was physical and mental exhaustion. And the second one was sexual problem. And the third was depression. And um, interestingly, in this paper, the authors presented um, um, decrease of or changes of menopausal symptoms according to um, the progress of menopausal stages. And the vasomotor symptoms tend to decrease according to um, progression of the menopausal stages, um, whereas the joint and muscular complaints intended to increase. And the severe scoring, more than 17 score, which I mentioned before, which may um, impact the quality of life, it was um, reported in 21% of participants. And um, another report from the National Research Institute um, last year, um, they um, reported um, a data from a thousand women and they included perimenopausal and postmenopausal as well. And the most prevalent um, answer was sleep disturbance in last year's annual report and the vaginal dryness was the second. And they reported a similar percentage of prevalence um, of joint and muscle discomfort. But um, when they divided into two groups, the premenopausal women, including perimenopause, they reported the physical and mental fatigue was the most prevalent symptom. And the postmenopausal group, they reported the vaginal dryness as the most complaint. Let's move to more southern part of the Asia. Well, um, there were two studies. Well, there are more studies, but I've, I've included two studies from the Thailand. And one was including about 400 women. And um, they all included premenopause, perimenopause, and postmenopausal women. Um, they, um, the unique thing of this um, study design was they stratified um, the postmenopausal women to according to the time passed after menopause. So the hot flushes um, were reported um, prevalently at the second and third year after menopause. It started to increase from the perimenopause, but most prevalent right after the menopause. And the mood swings were also um, prevalently reported um, at the first and second year of the menopause. The vaginal dryness and the muscle and joint pain was also reported most prevalently at the first and the second year of the menopause. Another study including 270 women aged 45 to 65 years old, they measured the menopause specific quality of life questionnaire. And um, the unique thing of this study, the unique thing of this study was um, also they stratified premenopausal, perimenopausal, and postmenopausal. But the authors, they included a qualitative assessment of the women's perception and attitudes about the menopause. So let's um, take a look in detail about this paper. Um, in this study, the muscle and joint pain and the poor memory and change in sexual desire were three most common symptoms. And the flushes were relatively lower than these three and vaginal dryness showed um, relatively lower prevalence as well. And um, in this study, 
the effect of menopausal symptoms on quality of life was measured as well as my, I mentioned. And in perimenopausal group, the vasomotor symptom affected um, the participant's quality of life at most, whereas um, the sexual changes was the highest factor impacting the quality of life in postmenopausal women. And most of the participants in this study showed ambivalent view about menopause, probably accepting the plant menopause natural thing and at the um at concurrently like fearing about the changes of their body. However, most of them thought menopause as a part of aging rather than a disease of um, the permanent changes. In Singapore, probably um, their um, background of many immigrants, um, a study um, presented from Singapore, including 600 women, they included um, the three races, Chinese and Malay and Indian. And in this study, about um, two thirds of total participants were perimenopause or postmenopausal women. And they separated another group named post hysterectomy. And this group might include um, both premenopause and postmenopausal women together because without uterus, we cannot know whether the patient is completely menopausal or not. So however, um, the most common menopausal symptom in oh sorry in um perimenopausal women was flushes. And um, the muscle and joint pain showed at most in postmenopausal and post-hysterectomy group. As you can see, the post-hysterectomy group, it was almost the same with the postmenopausal, except the vaginal dryness. And um, instead, they reported um, lethargy, the fatigue, is the um, fourth most common symptom um, of complaint. And that can be related to that um, the post-hysterectomy group has had included like premenopausal group together with postmenopausal group. In this study from the Singapore, they also showed a figure that according to the time from menopause, the hot flushes tend to decrease. And that was um, confirmed in the study, which was done in the Korean group as well. So as you can see, um, the time progression from the actual menopause, the um, prevalence of hot flushes decreased significantly. And as you can see at the right side figure, this is from the Korean group, and they also showed decreased hot flushes according to the menopausal progression. Lastly, this study from India, um, they included 100 women aged 40 to 65 years old. And um, similarly, um, in perimenopausal women, well, the hot flushes was the most common and the postmenopausal women joint and the muscle aches was the most common. But um, in totally, you can see that joint and mus muscular discomfort and physical and mental exhaustion and the flushes were the three most common um, prevalent symptom of the total um, population. So um, from now on, we're going to um, talk about current state of management in the real world Asian population. Um, the report, the annual report from our National Research Institute, which I've mentioned before, um, they included um, 1,300 women um, including perimenopause and postmenopause together. In about 61%, they reported they have experienced at least one severe menopausal symptom. However, surprisingly, um, the report shows um, only about 20% of these participants actually visited the hospital and seek the treatment using hormone replacement treatment. And um, remaining, otherwise remaining um, people, um, most of them used none 
of the treatment. And um, some of them um, just exercised and waited. And some of them used um, complementary medicine, probably like herbs or like functional food. In a very small small part of the participants, they um, tried the oriental medicine and other kinds of herbs. They um there was an um a survey named Asian Menopause Survey, which was conducted on, in two thousand six, and um they included a thousand postmenopausal women from China, Malaysia, and Taiwan. In Thailand and Hong Kong to determine the postmenopausal symptoms. And surprisingly, like not receiving any treatment for um, the postmenopausal symptoms was more than the half. So they reported about 59% of women suffering from the symptoms, but they did not treat any. And um, this probably it can be caused by the global tendency of like decreasing the prescription of the HRT after the publications of the WHI study. But not only this global tendency, um, there may be like more reasons, which is um, specifically um, limited to the Asian population. And one of them can be some kind of like perception of menopause. As we have seen at the Thailand paper, um, usually the Asian population can be ambivalent, like they are accepting this aging process, but at, at concurrently, they are feeling like fear of changes of their body. And also they have like high, higher level of privacy about their own body. So they fear, they probably fear to visit um, the hospital and ask the doctor, but instead they just ask their friends and their like cousins or mom, but then seeking a medical management. And also the awareness of the HRT, it seems lower than the Western countries. And according to this Asian menopause survey, um, there was like unusually high awareness in Taiwan and Thailand, but except the two countries, um, otherwise, it was all low as 30% or less than 30%. And um, a characteristic of um, this in this study was um, probably this, like not trying any treatment using HRT. It can be a fear of breast cancer development. Because surprisingly, um, the most frequently asked risk factor associated with HRT was breast cancer. And even in Taiwan and Thai, where the awareness was very high, the actual HRT use prevalence was very low, like around 30% or 25%. So you can see at the left figure, um, this is from um, the previous paper, which I've mentioned right before this slide. And the, the um, prevalence, the, the percentage of women who asked about the risk factor regarding breast cancer was about 30%. And those um, who answer that they don't know, well, they don't have any questions or like they don't know nothing about the risk factor was about 40%. So there may be some like issues with, with like awareness and also a um, misbelief of the risk factors as well. And at the right side, um, this was an age standardized breast cancer instance and mortality is a little bit old one, but it was presented in 2014 review journal. And um, as you can see in um, Asian countries, the incidence and the mortality is much lower than the Western countries, but still they have much fear, probably more fear regarding the breast cancer. And um, for the closing, um, we have like reviewed the symptoms of the Asian population. And probably you guys have already catched up some differences um, between um, Western countries and the Asian population. As you can see, the hot flushes 
were significantly like lower, low, lower, or reported lower in Asia. And instead, they have like reported more like joint pains or um, sleep problems or vaginal dryness. And in um, the PAN study, it's called PAN Asia Menopause Study. Um, it was like presented in 2005. And they also um, consistently reported that body and joint ache and caused, um, the cognitive function problem and the irritability was were the three most common symptoms um, reported from the PAN Asia Menopause Study as well. The hot flushes was relatively lower um, comparing to other um, the three most prevalent symptoms. So we're going to summarize our talk. Um, the variety of menopausal symptoms exist among different um, differently in Asian countries. As you have all seen, in some countries, um, perimenopausal, the most prevalent symptom was flushes. In some country, well, it was like shoulder stiffness or like sleep problems or vaginal dryness. The menopausal symptom in Asian population, it seems the musculoskeletal problems and sleep affects more than hot flushes. And exhaustion seems to be a more common problem in Asian women, especially. And changes in sexual desire and um, aggravation of vaginal dryness were common complaint, but often ignored. And the attitude toward menopause, it's um, again, completely different. And um, we, we have like confirmed that the Asian population, they do suffer from the menopausal symptoms, not less, probably more. However, um, they don't go to the hospital a lot. Sometimes they just learn, um, ask their friends and their like family members instead. And that can be some kind of like cultural differences as well. And they have ambivalent um, attitude to the HRT. So um, they have like less um, um, knowledge or less, uh, less thinking of the HRT as well. And probably um, this identification and education regarding menopause, it's, it's more important in Asian menopausal women. Thank you. Professor Yun, thank you very much for your excellent review. According to the title of our webinar, you focused especially on menopause beyond hot flushes, but you compared very well with the frequency and severity of hot flashes, with the conclusion that somatic symptoms like musculoskeletal problems and sleep disturbance affect Asian women even more than hot flashes, which are the key complaints in Western world's women. You stressed that changes in the sexual desire and vaginal dryness are common complaints, but often ignored. So we as doctors have to evaluate these using sensitive questions, but also using examinations accordingly. We will have questions and uh, answers at the end. And uh, I will go to the next speaker. And I have the great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor T. Yu, family name Yu. He is deputy director of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the Peking Union Medical College Hospital in Beijing, China. He is an MD and doctoral sub supervisor. He is the president of the Chinese Menopause Society, past president of the Asia Pacific Menopause Federation, member of EMAS, associate editor of Climacteric, the Journal of International Menopause Society. So he is very engaged in the field of menopause. I met Professor Yu first time in China, 2008, sending him greetings 
of our German Menopause Society in my function as president of that society. I have been invited several times for lectures in meetings of the Chinese Menopause Society. However, Professor Yu is engaged also in other fields of gynecology, especially in Chinese societies and in editorials of their journals, like he is the president of the Chinese Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology, vice president of Chinese Medical Education Association, in the editorial board of the Chinese Journal of Clinical Obstetrics and Gynecology, editorial board of Chinese Journal of Practical Gynecology and Obstetrics, editorial board of Chinese Journal of Osteoporosis and Bone Mineral Diseases, etc. For many years, he was involved within a number of scientific key research projects, including the support of the National uh, Natural Science Foundation of China. As corresponding author and co-author, he published more than 200 Chinese international and international original papers and reviews. In our webinar today, he was asked to speak on the issue Menopause Beyond Hot Flushes. Please, my friend, start your presentation. Okay. Um, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Muk, for your kind introduction for me. And uh, we are missing you uh, very much because of the pandemic. We haven't seen each other um, in in face to face uh, for uh, more than two years. So um, it's it's very happy to meet you online. And. Uh, uh, now uh, we ask. I am asked to give the topic of menopause beyond hot flashes: how to address somatic and psychological symptoms in Asian population. Uh, I'm Yu Qi from Peking Uni Medical College Hospital. Uh, this is the brief contents of my uh, talk. Uh, first, I will give a brief overview of estrogen functions and menopause symptoms, and then common menopausal uh, symptoms in Asia population, uh, and uh, then the uh, treatment strategy of somatic and psychological symptoms, and then uh, the last, I will talk about some uh, evidence of myometric T in somatic and psychological symptoms. So um, estrogen uh, target various organs and systems other than reproductive system, uh, like cognition and memory, bone mass maintenance, adopts uh, health, cardiovascular health and metabolism, lipid and glucose hematostasis, pancreatic cell function and wound healing. So estrogen uh, is have wild, wide uh, function in almost all the system of the body. The nature of menopause is our failure and deficiency of the estrogen. So uh, when estrogen is deficient, the central nervous system, sexual function, urogenital system, skin, muscle, and hair changes, weight and metabolic changes, and also muscle, musculoskeletal system will all have uh, infected and changes into the old style. So uh, the symptoms of menopause in will can be include central nervous system, uh, that is maybe psychological and uh, feeling uh, deficiency, and body composition alterations related to metabolic changes, and muscle skeleton alterations, urogenital and skin atrophy, and sexual dysfunction. So. Uh, all these kind of uh, symptoms, what is the main symptoms in Asian population? The uh, two commonest menopausal symptoms in Western countries are hot flashes and sleeplessness. While in Asian women, mostly reported somatic symptoms with a higher frequency observed in postmenopausal women when compared to perimenopausal ones. So in uh, different Asia populations, uh, mainland China, 
uh, reposes fatigue and weakness, uh, irritability, insomnia, muscle and joint pain, and heart flashes is uh, number five, the fifth popular symptoms of the menopause in China. But the fatigue, irritability, insomnia, muscle and joint pain had higher incidence among menopausal women. Well, in uh, Macau, China, Malaysia, Singapore, India, Japan, and South Korea are all reported somatic and psychological symptoms uh, surpass the symptoms of heart flashes and sweating. So why the uh, Asian woman, Asian menopausal woman seeking the doctor's help, the treatment? The sleeplessness is the uh, commonest symptoms in the uh, Asian woman to so seeking the help for the, from the doctors. And heart flashes, uh, well, the uh, heart flashes is the, uh, in the perimenopause, so um, have about half of the perimenopause and the postmenopause women have heart flashes. And the prevalence of muscle and joint pain is very common in Asian population in Macau, China, uh, India, Malaysia, Japan, the mainland China, and South Korea, uh, more than 50%. Uh, in Chinese women, uh, it's more than, it's about 70% uh, of the women reported the symptoms of muscle and joint pain. But actually, uh, in that age, women have no actual diseases in muscle and joint, but they real, really feeling about muscle and joint pain. Why was that? This is uh, the psychological symptoms. I think that is it. And also sleep disruption uh, is also very common in Asian population. In silence, uh, about 80% in India, 72%, and the mainland China, uh, 65%, South Korea, 60%, Hong Kong, China, 60%, Malaysia, 53%, Taiwan, China, 53%, Japan, 33%, Singapore, and 35 And the also the depression and the irritability is also very popular in Asian population. The prevalence of depression and irritability are very common uh, in among Chinese, uh, among Asian women during their menopause stage. In South Korea, 62%, and silent, uh, about 60%, and Hong Kong, China, 60%, India, uh, Japan, Taiwan, China, the mainland China, Singapore, and Malaysia all have that uh, symptoms. And also, uh, the irritability is also seen in these uh, areas. So, somatic and psychological symptoms are the most common symptoms in the area. Beyond heart flashes, somatic and psychological symptoms are the most common menopausal symptoms in Asian population. They including somatic symptoms like muscle and joint pain and psychological symptoms. The most common symptom is anxiety and depression. So how to treat of the somatic and psychological symptoms in this particular area, Asian Pacific area? And faced with this menopausal issue, how should we respond? And non-medical interventions, including any health examination, proper diet, social and mental activity, and exercise can help the woman to relieve the symptoms. But uh, with medical interventions, uh, the uh, most effective treatment are MHT, menopause hormone therapy, and also Someone can use traditional Chinese medicine and fentanyl estuary. And also with uh, very severe depression uh, patient, antidepressants can be used. So uh, in the uh, 
comment of the in the different guidelines, it is stated that M MHT menopause hormone therapy is the most effective treatment to relieve menopausal symptoms. The uh, it is a treatment measure uh, measurement taking taken to compensate for ovarian failure and estrogen deficiency. So in different uh, guidelines, including international menopause and the uh, NAMS, North American Menopause Society, as well as the Chinese Menopause Society, are uh, all uh, uh, recommended that MHT is the most effective treatment for menopausal symptoms. In the newest edition of the uh, 2023 Chinese guideline in menopause management and menopausal uh, hormone therapy, and we uh, they are all based on the international menopause guidelines. And men it is stated that the menopausal health management should begin with comprehensive lifestyle adjustment from the menopausal transition period and conducted various medical interventions, including menopause hormone therapy in suitable populations. Uh, so uh, it is uh, stated in our guideline that proper diet and exercise is the first line treatment for uh, peri and postmenopause women. Eat more fruit and vegetables that dietary products whole grains and soy beans. It's uh, special for uh, the Asian uh, people that eat fish, poultry meat, egg and the lean meat moderate, uh, moderately and the sugar control, less oil and uh, also soft control. And exercise is recommended as the follows, regular uh, aerobic exercise three to five times a week with a cumulative duration of 150 minutes per week, two to three additional resistance exercises to increase muscle mass and strength. For somatic symptoms, uh, when it is up here, it is necessary to first seek medical treatment at a relevant specialist. After excluding organic diseases, then consider menopausal symptoms and menopause hormone therapy can be preferred. So if the symptoms relief is not satisfactory, it is necessary to return to the specialist department for re-evaluation or multidiscipline collaborative diagnosis and treatment. For it is also, uh, it easily can be mixed up of the somatic symptoms with menopause symptoms and other uh, organic diseases. So it is important to set up a med MDT uh, consultation uh, for this kind of patient. For psychological symptoms, uh, if there is a moderate to severe vasomotor symptoms can be lead to sleep disorders and that is also can lead to psychological symptoms. Menopause hormone therapy can improve sleep by reducing the frequency of waking up, waking up and the sleeping time caused by um, vasomotor symptoms. Various types of menopause hormone therapy can improve chronic insomnia in menopausal transition and the postmenopausal women. By other, uh, the um, MHT regimens of estrogen alone or estrogen combined with progesterone can improve mold disorders in menopausal transition and postmenopausal women. So, um, what is the evidence of menopause hormone therapy in somatic and psychological symptoms? MHT significantly improves somatic and psychological symptoms. There is a lot of evidence for that. The sequential MHT regimen containing 
two milligram of sentinel beta estradiol and a 10 milligram betrogestron uh, is uh, studied in different RCT uh, studies. Uh, were accessed in uh, in this study, uh, 110 menopausal women were uh, assessed. After three months of treatment, not only well-being in general, but also uh, physical and mental well-being improved significantly. And also with ultra low dose of estradiol and the uh, is it's, it's also uh, associated with improvement uh, in feeling down and aging muscle or joints. And in uh, MRI score and the MANQ questionnaire, the total score was reduced uh, with the use of that uh, regimen. Uh, in a study of 332 patients uh, were uh, recruit, recruited, uh, randomized uh, to continue combined uh, group or placebo group for five weeks, and the result shows uh, the uh, scores were significantly improved. Um, MHT also uh, significantly improved sleep quality in menopausal women in, in uh, Asia. The uh, this this uh, retrospective study. Uh, had 342 women to evaluate the efficacy of menopause hormone therapy in improving subjective sleep quality and the severity of menopause symptoms. Um, using the uh, uh, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. So with the sequential use of MHT, the sleep quality is greatly improved. And also in this study, um, the uh, tibulum and the uh, 70 bit estradiol uh, ha have both improved uh, the uh, insomnia, depression, and the nervous nervousness symptoms uh, were completely relieved with uh, by the six months without any significant differences between the two groups. Depressive symptoms are significantly associated with special motor symptoms. Uh, this study uh, is uh, internationally representative cross-sectional survey recruited uh, to more than 2,000 women uh, with 40 to 65 years or, or old. Symptoms were assessed by the menopausal specific quality of life questionnaire and the big uh, depression uh, inventory two questionnaire. Um, in these questionnaires, we score more than 20 defined as moderate severe depression symptoms. So uh, after adjusting for multiple factors when compared with women to uh, no or mild vasomotor symptoms, women with moderate to severe vasomotor symptoms were more likely to have moderate to severe depressive symptom. And MHT is also beneficial to menopausal related depression symptoms. Uh, these uh, two studies have shown the significant changes uh, between the uh, is a significant uh, differences uh, can be seen in placebo and MHT group. The uh, depressive, depressive symptoms is significantly lower in the MHT group. So in summary, uh, estrogens play an important role in female reproductive and non-reproductive systems, systems. The nature of menopause is ovarian failure and the deficiency of estrogens, causing various symptoms. Beyond hot flashes, somatic and psychological symptoms are the most common menopause sy symptoms in Asian population, especially in China. MHT is the most effective treatment to relieve menopausal symptoms, including menopausal-related somatic and psychological symptoms 
after excluding organic diseases in relevant specialist department. Menopause health management should begin with comprehensive lifestyle adjustment from the menopausal transition period and conduct various medical interventions, including menopause hormone therapy in suitable populations. Thank you for your listening. Professor Yu, thank you for your excellent review. Like uh, Professor Yun, you focused on menopause beyond hot flushes, which are menopause-related somatic and psychological symptoms. You have given a summary also of the Chinese guidelines to manage these complaints, emphasizing that MHD should start, if possible, as early as possible in the menopausal transition period. We can now start with a Q&A. And um, I see that there are four questions in the in the computer. But first, um, should I read the questions? I think so. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred. Yes, please. Let's start with uh, the There's a special the question, um, which I uh, I, I, I start with yeah. the second one because it is uh, directly to Professor Ichi. What would you say about the relationship between the reported menopausal symptoms, Ichi, uh, for example, to mood related symptoms associated with other symptoms and how? Just now you had a slide of the correlation of depressive mood and hot flashes. Would you, in general, think that? You always have to have hot flashes uh, that you can say that psychological symptoms are menopausal. I would not think so. I think there are also studies where you have depressive mood and psychological symptoms without uh, having hot flashes. So as yeah. I could see in your guidelines of Chinese guidelines in one slide, you can give HRT solely, also only about uh, to women who have psychological symptoms, even if they have no hot flashes. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Um, in some of the uh, Chinese uh, women uh, actually have no vasomotor symptoms at, at all. So they come to the hospital for seeking the uh, medical help uh, only for the uh, psychological problems, like uh, they are very anxious and anxiety and irritability and easily to uh, cry. And uh, um, they, they, they have tears uh, when talking to me. So uh, these uh, symptoms can be relieved by MHT uh, in about uh, uh, two weeks to one month uh, with using um, some any kind of uh, hormone therapy. So um, this uh, is, I think the uh, psychological sim symptoms is independent uh, from the uh, hot flashes. But uh, actually, um, when the, uh, the the some women have uh, neck sweating um, in in uh, during the uh, not, I mean during the night, they sweat sweating all all the time or have a hot flash uh, uh, one, once uh, up about 10 minutes, every 10 minutes they have hot flash, they cannot sleep. So uh, they, uh, in the daytime, they must have the, ha the uh, in the situation of a strong irritability. So uh, that also they make me, them uh, not uh, very easily to get angry, or argue with somebody uh, that is also uh, be uh, treated as psychological symptoms. I really agree from my practical clinical experience. Even there are always some papers published where they associated um, the different symptoms uh, like depressive mood with hot flashes. They even give some um, mechanistic uh, explanations, but 
it is our your our experience uh, with many patients which we have in our menopause clinics that you can have very isolated symptoms. I can yeah. add that um, Professor E in his hospital has a very special department on menopause, seeing uh, many patients, and we are in Beijing in the other hospital have also uh, one of the largest specialized menopause clinic with about 500 patients every day. And yeah. I was very, so, very, yes, and I was also very surprised coming from Germany that we can treat also somatic symptoms like joint pains or skeletal muscle pains only with HRT in very short time. This yeah. is yeah. your guidelines. Mm -hmm. So the other question is also not so diff difficult. Uh, the question is, since there are various menopausal symptoms in different individuals during the menopause transition, when or in what situation would you say MHT is necessary or mandata mand mandatory? This means, when should you give HRT and when not? Who want to answer? I think the answer is easy. Yeah. I think if there are no contraindications to HRT, if the women is likely to accept uh, HRT, and if the complaints are very seriously affecting quality of life, I would start with HRT. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I think the uh, most important uh, treatment uh, aim is for MHT is to um, ha ha uh, increase their quality of life. Um, the, if they, they have uh, various kinds of symptoms, uh, they uh, do not want to work or even do not want to talk with each other, with other people. So, uh, the quality of life is uh, uh, greatly reduced uh, when they have severe symptoms of any kind. So uh, it is recommended to use MHT if there is no contraindications uh, to relieve their symptoms to improve the quality of life. In this con uh, context, I have also a question to Professor Yun. Uh, you stressed that 20% um, of the of the menopausal symptoms are only in hospitals. So my question is in South Korea, uh, where mostly is the treatment in hospitals, or have you like in Western world um, gynecologists in own practice? I think it is very important this difference. We in China have menopause clinics in hospitals and almost no gynecologist in own practice. So there is a difference of diagnostic and treatment um, um, dependent where the patients go there. What? How is the situation in, in South Korea? Well, I think that's a little bit different in Korea. Well, we have um, many local clinics that like practices, like practice clinics, private clinics. So it's very easy to approach to the gynecologist to um, get prescribed the hormone treatment. But however, in my personal experiences, the atmosphere in Korea, the most of the women, they think the hormone is very dangerous because it may um, result in a breast cancer. So they always like try other things first. And then if it doesn't work and if they can't just um, wait anymore, then they come to the hospital and ask for the treatment. So actually there is like, um, the approach is very easy. So there's many gynecologists, even not, not only in the big hospitals, we have many private clinics. But, uh, I think this difference to you know, China is important. We, in, in China, most patients go a long way to come to a specialized clinic and uh, the experts in those clinics may uh, be may treat more with HRT. I know from my friend DG, we always, when we make our lectures, stress the importance of HRT. Also in another point for um, prevention of osteoporosis, it was not really in your both talks. How would you think about this HRT for prevention of osteoporosis, Ichi? 
um, osteoporosis prevention to give HRT? Osteoporosis, I mean. Um, for the um, bone protection, um, it is uh, recommended to, to start early. Um, like uh, the uh, cardiovascular system, uh, if the uh, bone loss uh, is uh, uh, very, uh, a severe bone loss uh, already occurred, uh, there is a no um, further to increase the bone density uh, with uh, uh, estrogen. Uh, so uh, it can it must use other um, uh, medications for the uh, osteoporosis. Um, the the uh, effect of the estrogen is to protect the bone uh, from the from calcium uh, losing, um, so it's better to start in early menopause uh, to uh, protect the bone from the uh, the osteoporosis uh, rather than the treatment mm -hmm. of the. Uh, this is clear that you. Uh, that estrogens are very good, maybe the best um, drug treatment for prevention. For treatment, we have bisphosphonates and other treatment, but we in our menopause clinic really start also HRT only for prevention of osteoporosis because it is in the labeling. And because with every patient, we have a DEXA and we make, we know the situation in the bone. So just um, yesterday, I I returned from our clinic in Beijing and the day before we had about 10 patients where we only because of osteoporosis started HRT. More difficult is cardiovascular situation because it's not in, in, in the label, labeling. Um, nevertheless, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. This is also a point. But I yeah. think um, Professor Yun in South Korea, it is really a problem to start for prevention of osteoporosis because uh, the fear of HRT in general. Well, we, um, the gynecologists, I think my colleagues, they all agree with um, that the fact the HRT will help to um, decrease the bone reabsorption and that will help to protect the bone, um, to maintain the bone mass. But however, um, in my personal opinion, if the patient has no like menopausal symptoms at all, I think um, it'll be a little bit risky to start the HRT only for the bone protection. But well, there may be some like several various um, opinions about that. So I just agree to you about bone protecting effect, but just personally, I, I would not really prescribe the HRT only for the bone protection without the menopausal symptom. It seems you have also a little bit the fear of this HRT, which is uh, a problem maybe in your country. I really start HRT for bone protection in ladies who have very bad bone and had al already other therapies like exercise, calcium, vitamin D, etc. Because um, from guidelines of the societies of osteoporosis, in the guidelines. It is in the group A, that means that estrogens indeed are the best drugs to prevent osteoporosis, and it is in the labeling. But um, it seems to be difficult in the different countries. I well, will come, yeah, you have an answer? Well, not because of the risk or the fear of the breast cancer. Well, yes. I, I do know about the guidelines, but not just with only HRT may not really enough to increase the bone mineral density. So probably we may need to like consider like the osteoporosis medication with the HRT. It is, uh, it can prevent further bone loss. This is clear. So um, the prevention, not the treatment is a really good in indication for HRT. Let us come to the last question, which I see here in the computer. You see it also maybe a little bit more difficult. If a lady becomes aminoric fo following my RENA coil, inserted for endometrial hyperplasia at age 50, when 
do we decide she has attained actual menopause? Do we need to monitor her LH and FSH to diagnose menopause so we could give her HRT for hot flashes? You both can answer. I also can answer. Uh, it's a good question. Yeah, um, with endometrial hyperplasia, that uh, we should uh, different th. The, which, which kind of uh, hyperplasia is if the patient has the atypical hyperplasia, is the is best to do the hysteroscop uh, hysterectomy. Um, the uh, do the operation to cut the uterus off, and then uh, we can start the uh, MHT uh, with uh, estrogen only therapy um, in, it, it is very safe. But if the, uh, the patient have uh, non-atypical hyperplasia, um, it is uh, recommended for in our uh, special guideline for that kind of patient that we first using the um, uh, progesterone uh, very high dose of uh, progesterone to reverse uh, the pathological changes of the endometrium. Uh, after three months, we uh, do the endometrium biopsy again, and uh, uh, we see the uh, endometrium is totally reversed. And then we put a, a marina inside and then uh, start the uh, menopausal treatment with MHT. Um, oral or transdermal estrogen, uh, it, it is safe, I think. The focus in your answer on the safety regarding the endometrial hyperplasia, I agree with you. But the question is here, I think uh, this patient already, they had decided, the doctor, that she can be treated with myelina. Um, and uh, the question is, if you need LH and FSH to monitor the therapy my my thing i think you do you do not need and uh, even if you would uh, measure it there is no real uh, chance to know when she is postmenopausal according to those hormones so we need not to measure we can give here um, the hrt and as you say it should, um, we give the high dose progestins um, continuously, but uh, we can also give HRT if it, it is benign endometrial hyperplasia, so together with estrogen. Or uh, sometimes we give only the estrogen transdermally together with myrena. Professor Yun, you want also to answer this question? Yes, of course, Dr. Murek. I just totally agree to you. I don't think the hormone lab is necessary for... Um, to like decide whether we're gonna give her a hormone or not, because um, that information is not really a decisive test for starting HRT. The discrepancy between the lab and the actual menopausal status is well, very common during the transition period. So I would just agree to not doing the hormone labs for like de deciding whether we're gonna start HRT. And um, using Merona, well, um, these days, like um, not only for the hyperplasia, for early stage endometrial cancer, there's like many studies um, ongoing for uh, the treatment um, effect of the Mirena. So I think it will be okay for the endometrial hyperplasia, uh, having the Mirena for the treatment purpose. Then in that case, I would probably try Tibolan instead of um, estradiol valerate, probably. Probably they'll safer, but I just agree not doing the blood test. Yes, yes so we agree. Just I see that in the meantime, there have come more questions. Maybe we make well, only short answers. The question here is different measures were used across cultures. Would this be an issue when comparing symptoms across cultures? The question is, is the, the method for measuring the symptoms important? I think not. If the method is standardized, is a good method, a good a questionnaire, uh, you can compare the, the data. Yeah. 
you agree? Then what is your experience? Oh, this is more. What is your experience about use of testosterone in menopause? Mm. Ah. <laughs> it's a <laughs> difficult, difficult question. First to say, we have no test. I, I, I am not aware of testosterone tablets, also yeah. not in China. Uh, just yeah. I had a discussion with Sang Yen Wan, uh, my colleague, as you know, my hospital. He says there is testosterone uh, tablets in China, but it is not testosterone. It is a, it is a synthetic derivative. So physiological testosterone, we have only in creams, and um, so it is difficult for the dosing. And the next one is, is uh, really difficult from the studies. So we do not really know about the risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. How is your answer, Professor Yin? Well, yes, it's the same for us as well. So we don't have um, testosterone tablets for the HRP and we don't have the vaginal gel as well. So I really don't have any experiences using testosterones for the HRP. What I can add that we use often the tipolone. The tipolone yeah. uh, can decrease the SHPG and with this you have more endogenous testosterone and it is like treatment of testosterone. Uh, Tibolone is an excellent drug. Um, it was um, not so put in the press because of a risk of breast cancer. But this study, the Liberate study, was after breast cancer. So the primary risk of breast cancer is not higher than with normal HRT. So my answer is you can use the Tibolone or you can use, but this is off-label, it's not in the labeling. You can use a testosterone cream in very, very low dosages. And I give it in the in the underarm sometimes also to children when we use when we need some um, testosterone. But it is a difficult question. Normally uh, we cannot use because it is not labeled. Yeah. I go to the next one. Can we use HRT with benign raised intracranial hypertension? Hypertension. Hypertension. My answer is we cannot, because hypertension can in, uh, can um, uh, destabilize so-called uh, arterial plaques, especially in the cranial plaques, and there is a high risk of stroke. So I would not use it um, um, in in patients with hypertension uh, because of the risk of plaques. First, the blood pressure should be normal. Have a Professor Poin Yon, you have to answer something. If not, then I go to the last question. How does this compare to Asian population living in countries reporting vasa motor symptoms as number one symptoms? Uh, it seems there are country countries in Asia. I think in, in uh, you had a table that sometimes vasa motor symptoms are reported. As, for, as number one, but I see not the problem of this question, then it is number one, but normally it is not number one in other Asian countries. Yeah, yeah. Um, when, when we're doing the face-to-face uh, -face investigation, um, uh, uh, I mean the uh, in-home uh, questionnaire investigation, the first um, Men, uh, menopause symptoms is uh, muscle and joint pain. But uh, when, we, uh, when we're doing this, uh, the same investigation in the uh, patient, among the patient come to the hospital, uh, the uh, incidence of uh, uh, heart crashes will increase um, because uh, the, uh, the woman, uh, Asian woman do not think muscle and the joint pain is a kind of uh, menopausal symptoms, but uh, uh, heart pressure is. So so they, they uh, come to the hospital because of the heart flashes, uh, but not for the muscle and joint pain. Professor Bo Yun, you have a, a comment or have another question? If well, not, I, I agree no. to Dr. Yu. Well, the hot flushes, it's well known as a menopausal symptom, but the joint pain, sometimes they go to the rheumatologist and, or orthopedics, 
and they don't know like they're not aware of that kind of like part of the menopausal symptom. So I still think the muscle joint pain may be the most prevalent symptom. Okay, there are other questions from the two speakers. In the computer are no questions. If not, then as the chair of the webinar, it is my job to close the symposium by thanking everyone who was involved in the first line, of course, both speakers, I think we had have excellent lectures and also good discussion. Then I would like to thank Emma's uh, responsible for the scientific content, the KIT agency for organization, technical support. Especially, I would like to thank Lina Silva Salinas who prepared this webinar in an excellent manner with um, several emails to us briefing us to make this webinar as best as possible. The EMAS webinars have got to be now very popular, translation in six languages. So I also would like to thank the interpreters and let me thank also Abbott for the financial support. And last not least, thanks to all who have participated, looking and listening to two excellent lectures. Hui Dao Schule. With this, I finish this webinar.